Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Um, local owner dropped off his 2002 Dodge Ram 1500 uh, V8 5.9 liter and uh, he said he had a fire under the hood. One of his fuel lines that crosses over from one bank to the other apparently ruptured and uh, caught on fire. So he said the fire wasn't big, he put it out and the truck drove fine, he replaced the hose, uh, truck drove fine for a few months. Then it wouldn't start. Took it to a local shop and they found some wiring damage where the uh, fire was and they replaced the entire distributor that includes the cam sensor and apparently the crank sensor. Um, got it running but now the owner says um, if he tries to go uphill it almost stalls out then he can kind of feather the gas get it going again and it's kind of intermittent so I'm suspecting there's more wiring issues let's pull in the shop take a look at it uh, scan it for codes see where this goes by the way the codes that are stored right now P0340 camshaft position sensor circuit that's important uh, radiator fan relay circuit leak detection pump don't really care loss of cam or crank signals p1391 well, let's fire it up see how it runs fires right up um, so let's do a visual inspection first all right so the owner said the fire was in this area right here and what do we see? I already see some meltage down there. These two wires. I don't know where they go. But they are melted together. You can see exactly where they go. So let me take some notes here. I'll look up a wiring diagram. And see if we can figure out what is missing. You see this connector's toasty got some meltage on there so might be the pins are messed up but we have to fix all this first before even going on a test drive and if it runs great after the wiring repairs then we'll call it fixed if not we'll go further all right so here's what I what I'm seeing here um, this right here this pigtail that was replaced that goes to the crankshaft position sensor which lives in the bell housing. So these wires go to the CKP down there. And then the camshaft position sensor that lives inside the distributor. Um, now again, these are not OE parts, so that could be a variable. But the pigtail, or the actual OE connector, looks a little crispy. But the pins still look okay. We can do a drag check on those. So that plugs in there. And then the wires that were melted, I unplugged this sensor. That is the oil pressure sensor that lives near the distributor. You can see the uh, signal and ground wires were kind of melted together. So we can tape up the signal wire just to make sure that doesn't touch anything it's not supposed to. And then reconnect everything and put a scope on the signal wires for the CKP and the CMP. They're accessible right here. Take this thing for a test drive, see if anything weird happens. Two channels on the Pico, let's see where we're hooked up. Camshaft position sensor, uh, pin one, the tan and yellow, is the signal wire that goes to the PCM. And then the crankshaft position sensor is down here, pin one, gray and black, is the signal wire that goes to the PCM. So let's hook up the Pico, take this thing for a test drive. Right, before we start up the engine, let's clear the fault code. Yes, read fault code. There we go, no fault code stored. That's good. So on the scanner, basic live OB2 data pulled up, throttle position, coolant temp, RPM. Map sensor, 14.5, fuel trims, and the two oxygen sensors. Here we have the crank and cam signals. Let's fire it up. 
Okay, we have both. Let's take it for a test drive. All right, so let's take a look at, this is a known good capture, the truck is happy. There's the cam, there's the crank, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pulses per cam pulse. So that's one engine revolution, two engine revolutions. It's a distributor engine, so there's no sync pulse. Okay, so let's just run it. Take it for a test drive. Our scan data looks perfect. Fuel trims are 0%. I mean, this truck's running amazingly well. There's our map, coolant temp, oxygen sensor is going up and down. Downstream is alive, it's doing something. And, oh, had a little, little hiccup. Do we see anything interesting right there? Nope, still, sensors didn't drop out. Let's take it for a test drive. Check engine lights back on. Leak detect pump solenoid circuit. And look, loss of camera crank signals pending. Huh, how about that? I'm wondering if we should measure at the PCM because the problem could be somewhere downstream in the harness side, you know. We should probably hook the scope up to, to the PCM. Alright, it's got a pretty good pull. I'm going to keep driving it, see if it glitches out. Wow, P0340 came back. How is that possible? because I didn't see a single glitch during the entire test drive. And it just shut off. What? <laughs> this truck is crazy. No glitches at all. Let's, uh, let's clear these out. That's exactly what happened to the truck when the customer pulled up to my shop. It just stalled out at idle. How do you explain that? The, sun, the signal is fine. So I think we have to go to the PCM. You would think if there's a circuit fault, like is it an open wire? Intermittently? Let's crank it again. Fires right up. There's the signal. Read fault code. Okay, so two current codes not related to radiator fan relay circuit and leak detection pump. Now let's drive it back. I want to hook up the scope to the PCM instead of um, the cam crank, you know, at the connectors. Okay, I put it in park, back at the shop. Why are the RPMs going high? Now they're back down. So now we have a P1391 loss of cam or crank signals. We're definitely not losing any signals. They are solid, steady. My only question is, what about the synchronization? So I know on Chrysler's or Jeeps and you know Mopar products, this is very important here. So number of pulses within the cam signal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one's like on the edge. That's not correct. The cam transition should happen between the crank pulses, not somewhere near the crank pulse itself. So what I think is going on here is the distributor was not properly installed because I'm sure there is some adjustment there and basically the computer is being confused in terms of synchronization. So it's not a physical loss of signal, it's more of a you know, correlation and I guess there's no code for that, it just says there's something wrong with the cam sensor. 
<laughs> um, so let's look up the OE procedure on how to clock this distributor and take it another spin and make sure those codes don't set again and then I think we'll, we can give it back to the owner make sure it doesn't stall out again so looking up some service info on the 1391 code the flowchart is quite um, useless they actually do tell you to use the DRB3 as an oscilloscope which is amazing but then they just say you know check the uh, um, for missing signal check the pulse wheel check this check that check for broken wires remove the crank sensor um, not very useful but here possible causes CMP and CKP out of sync so <laughs> that's my suspicion and for distributor replacement in the procedure here to tell you you know put this number one at TDC compression and then on the actual distributor there's the rotor this should be cylinder number one alignment mark okay but checking distributor position can we use a scanner to see what the sync is um, it says gain access to set sync in the DRB and then it should say in range along with zero zero if a plus or minus is displayed next to the degree number then you can loosen that hold down bolt and clock the distributor until you get zero so this option is available in the PCM menu special function set sync signal engine must be running Let's fire it up look at that 18 way off not in range so amazing let's uh, loosen that hold down bolt and tweak this thing until we see zero the distributor is buried in the back of the engine under the cowl I'm just trying to get a visual on this hold down bolt so I can see it it's right there but how do you get to it it's like under the distributor body only with a side a small um, closed end wrench perhaps let me see if I can loosen that up then we'll um, we'll tweak it while watching that data pit okay so managed to get that pinch bolt loosened up the distributor is very tight in there wiggled it so now we can kind of tweak it along the axis let's fire it up get into the PCM here and then we already have the scope hooked up we'll do a cam crank correlation and I think that cam transition should be in between the crank pulses like we've seen in other Chrysler products of this vintage special function set sync signal okay engine must be running ha I got it pretty close in range amazing I just randomly tweaked it one way so let me tighten down that pinch bolt and oh you see it was like minus 2 and then 23 let's see let's rev it up let's try that again open throttle oh I guess this gas pedal is getting stuck okay set sync signal okay minus two minus one minus three zero that should be close enough it's in range I think it's happy let's tighten it down alright pinch bolts tighten down fires right up set sync signal it's happy minus one minus two let's go back into Pico and see what the synchronization is nice throttle response let's pause that 
Come in here. Check it out. That's what we want to see. See the transition? Boom. So we'll save this. We're done with this truck. Let's take it out on final test drive. Okay, so clear the codes out. The only code is radiator fan relay circuit. Let's uh, take it for a spin. Let's see how this thing accelerates. Very smooth. Nice V8 power. Fuel trims are on the money. Single digits. Everything looks happy, so we'll drive it around the block, scan it for codes, and make sure those cam codes uh, don't return. All right, fantastic. After 10 miles, cam codes did not return, so the distributor was out of sync. Would be helpful if Chrysler had a specific code for that, but they just said camera crank signal missing, so the computer's not even sure which one, you know, it, it, it's not a good code description. Um, but Considering the history of the vehicle, distributor was replaced. Sure enough, it wasn't clocked right, so the sink was off. Um, that's it. Uh, I'm sure the owner will be pleased to have all his power back, no more stalling, and uh, and that's it. So thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.